Hello, I'm Rob Hirschfeld, CEO and co-founder of RackN, and this is a short presentation talking about the enterprise shift that we are seeing from VMware into bare metal OpenShift, and specifically OpenShift virtualization. And this is a critical transition that we see going on and something that is dramatically empowered by rack and bare metal management through digital rebar. What we wanna do in giving you this information is to really challenge your assumptions, for you to look at the type of infrastructure you're building and rethink what you're doing. We see the market moving towards Kubernetes on bare metal and our customer experience drives that challenge. We see this is a need across the market whether it's in more typical enterprise or AI-driven workloads, this is the trend line that we see as driving the industry forward. And that's an important thing for us because we are fundamentally delivering digital rebar as a bare metal cloud, allowing our customers to be hardware agnostic, hardware type agnostic, operating system and, and distro agnostic. That type of freedom allows customers to really rethink how they architect infrastructure, what choices they make, what things they're locked into, and positions them for innovation. And I wanna to talk to how what we see in the market is really coming to bear in this next generation of design. And when we look at virtualization and start questioning whether or not virtualization is required as an infrastructure component, and this is beyond what Broadcom is driving. This is actually something that enterprise architects are looking at is can I eliminate that virtualization layer from my designs, from my plans, especially if I'm heavily invested in containerized workloads already. And when you pull that requirement out, it really opens up the choices. We're not saying that we are going to abandon VMs. What we're saying is that virtualization, virtualization first platforms are going to quickly decline. We're still gonna have virtual machines. We need virtual machines. There's a lot of systems and platforms that depend on them, but having a virtualization platform and then layering container platforms on top of that isn't as logical. A lot of times we have workloads that don't require any specific virtualization or VMs at all. They are multi-machine cross-system dependencies, and those are strictly containerized or AI or batch workloads. Those don't need virtualization, and they can be run very well without it. So what we see is this increasing mix, this increasing trend line towards having infrastructure that doesn't require a virtualization layer. This is the major architectural change. And when you look at that, you start to realize that Given the pricing of virtualization, virtualization systems, we can very quickly shift out at least the containerized workloads directly to bare metal, where we can reduce complexity and cost significantly. And we find this as a tremendous advantage. We know from working with customers over and over again that they can achieve bigger and bigger savings, over 50% of what their current spend is by changing their infrastructure approach. That means that you can actually improve your savings based on your hardware, your hardware OEM choices, eliminating virtualization or improving architectural choices to make different choices about which processors you use, how much storage you need, how much networking, the size and core density of your systems. We also know that you can get much faster into production by eliminating the software complexity. You can reduce that virtualization tax altogether you can improve the architecture flexibility and be able to mix and match different types of machines, different architectures of machines. And you can also reduce the staffing expertise required by simplifying your stack. Overall, we see dramatic improvements in consistency, security, and governance by working with a bare metal platform like Digital Rebar and then in having a simpler, more streamlined system on top of that. Not eliminating these platforms, but eliminating the stack of technologies that have been required in the past. And what that means is that we are able to bring in comprehensive lifecycle management, make BIOS, firmware, HTTPS, secure boot, uh, vendor agnostic systems, GPU management, NIC firmware management. All of these things can be abstracted into standardized processes creating a bare metal cloud that lets you innovate much more quickly and focus on the systems and processes above that layer. That is combined with this idea that there's a generational hardware refresh in process. 
in which virtualization hosts that have expensive CPUs and software licenses and SANS are being reallocated into AI workers and container workers. That allows you to reallocate what money you're spending, not necessarily reduce your IT spend, but spend it more effectively where you get the biggest ROI, whether that's in GPUs or in data storage in general. This is a new chance to make better use of your IT resources. It also means that we can shift our architectural designs from a tightly integrated system like we've had to buy for virtualization stacks into a more scaled out design where we can mix and match different types of systems, different vendors. We can actually create a much more heterogeneous environment than we've had in the past and with tools like Digital Rebar, manage that very effectively as a consistent, repeatable automation. But the thing that's holding us back here is that there is no clear reference architecture. This is one of the things that we are working on very aggressively to try to help customers move more quickly, build that bare metal and container reference architecture using systems like OpenShift, where enterprises have a high degree of confidence in the vendor, but don't know what to build or buy yet we address those questions. Because Kubernetes fundamentally requires an infrastructure manager. It is a container platform, not an infrastructure platform. And when you look at a bare metal Kubernetes story, especially one driving virtual machines where you don't need all of the components of a developer-focused Kubernetes, then we start looking at the ability of a bare metal cloud to really drive multiple use cases across the system. And you need to be aware of this as you look at Kubernetes. If you're looking at it for virtualization, you're not looking at feeding developers, you're looking at feeding operators. And in that case, you want to be able to quickly go through a bootstrapping process. And then how do you deploy that cluster? In a, very, in a virtualization case, you might not need a lot of different clusters operating, being created and destroyed. You might need to be able to just have a large Kubernetes cluster that's running your virtualization footprint to replace VMware. Both cases are ultimately important. We want to be able to have very dynamic clusters where you're doing a base Kubernetes on metal system and automating that. And we want to be able to have a very simple drop in and robust virtualization infrastructure where you're working to replace virtual virtualization and VMware. Those don't have to be commingled. Those actually can be different systems run by different teams. That's very consistent with what we see enterprise uh, design from a team perspective already. So let's dive into what bare metal Kubernetes means in a little bit more detail. First, it means that there is no virtualization required, but it does have operational complexity that you have to be able to account for in the life cycle of your cluster. You have to handle networking, DNS, operating system configuration, especially as you look at dynamic clusters that rely on APIs. No matter what you're doing, you're going to be looking at a bootstrapping of the infrastructure itself and then using whatever cluster manager is included in your distro or distros to spin up additional worker nodes. Uh, since worker nodes typically have a dynamic life cycle, you have to be able to provision, deprovision, clean up, and reprovision workers on demand. In our experience, Enterprise Kubernetes means having a specific distro, it means working with a vendor who has a cluster management strategy and then being able to engage and drive that capability from the cluster manager of that distro. Again, something that you need a bare metal cloud with API driven infrastructure to really facilitate. Otherwise, your team will be maintaining very complex infrastructure that has to be API driven with high resilience and lifecycle capabilities to do things like manage RAID, BIOS, configuration updates, uh, OS patching or OS changeouts against standardized images and immutable deployments. Uh, these are advanced and more complex operational environments for bare metal than most teams are used to handling. In that model, we prefer Red Hat OpenShift for bare metal in that we see Red Hat as a more packaged system for enterprises beyond just Kubernetes. Most enterprises don't just want a raw Kubernetes infrastructure. They want an ecosystem where people can show up, vendors can show up, certify capabilities against that infrastructure, and then have it supported as part of a community. 
Red Hat is doing a very good job of building that full community, including the OpenShift virtualization capabilities that they are working to support as a virtualization alternative for VMware. So while you're still working from one big vendor to another big vendor, uh, Enterprise's confidence in Red Hat as a trusted partner allows you to accelerate your delivery of OpenShift, OpenShift virtualization by having this trusted partner, standardized processes, well understood operating environments. And this is a place where RackN is working very closely with Red Hat and working with our own engineering team to provide all of the necessary bare metal pieces to make OpenShift and OpenShift virtualization work incredibly well in your organization to the highest standards of production readiness. I hope that this quick review of bare metal Kubernetes, bare metal OpenShift, and the drive towards virtualization on top of Kubernetes makes sense to you. If this is something that you're interested in exploring, please contact our team. We can both provide more information about how OpenShift virtualization and Kubernetes virtualization work as a very strong alternative to your VMware strategies. But we can also provide ways to ensure that you can get proof of value systems running quickly and that you can make sure that those roll into your production bare metal environments with smooth, scalable automation.